hi there everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geek Tubby Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today we're going through a, a fun little deck. And of course, once I build a companion deck, it's after the rule change. So <laughs> yay, we'll get into that for sure. But before we do, go ahead and remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us and we love you very much for it. And the link will be down below. Today, we are playing Mill Me Baby one more time. And it's weird because of course the companion that we have is the old, good old Nightmare Cat, Lurus of the Dream Den. Now there's two ways I think that milling can do go pretty well, and that's cycling or this way. And I wanted to try this way for sure. And if you don't know what Lurus is, somehow, if you've never played Magic before, it's a one and two ores off, so black, white, black, white, three, two, companion with lifelink. His companion trait is each permanent card in your starting deck has converted mana that costs two or less. Which is crazy, because that means you can't even put him in the main bit, which is sad. But, that's okay. Because during each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. So, it's going to be a little... Hopefully, it's going to get crazy, and we'll go ahead and let you know how. But, with the new companion rule as a time of recording, so because of the weekend that happened with the tournament, it got busted. So with companion, you pay three static, like you do a morph on sorcery speed, and then you can put them into your hand and then you can cast them with whatever their cost is so at this point we're going late in the game anyway so three late turn six is not going to matter or turn five yeah it's really not going to change much oh yeah so and then we'll get into the deck all right so the first guy we got is the merfolk secret keeper it is a blue for a zero four merfolk it's got adventure and adventure is venture venture deeper and it's one blue sorcery target player puts the top four cards in the library into their graveyard Yep, simple as that. Yeah, you mill first, and then you play him as an adventure dude, and then you, you play him again as a blocker. He yeah. dies, and then Luris is like, hey, play him again. Yep. And the next one is Overwhelmed Apprentice. It's a one drop, one two. Uh, enters the battlefield, each opponent uh, puts the top two cards of the library in the graveyard, and then Scry two, which helps you out through the rest of the deck for sure. Next up is the Sage of Mysteries. It is a blue for a zero two constellation. Whenever an enchantment card enters the battlefield under your control, target player puts the top two of their library into their graveyard. Oh yeah. So constellation triggers all the time. Familiar stuff. Should be fun. And one of the better ones to keep bringing back is Wall of Lost Thoughts. It's one in a blue zero four defender. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target player puts the top four cards of their library in the graveyard. So four keep happening over and over. That's pretty good. Yeah. Next up is Omen of the Dead. It is a black for an enchantment with flash. Whenever it enters the battlefield, return, return target creature from the graveyard to your hand. You can play a black and two and sacrifice it to scry two. So this triggers Constellation, and yep. it gets back any of your dudes that mill. So it's just all around really good for what you need it. Yeah, and just help you just keep pulling off your future draws for sure. And if Luris dies, this is one way to get it back, because you know you can only get them once, really. The next one is Drown Secrets. It's a one and a blue enchantment. Whenever you cast a blue spell, target player puts the top two cards uh, into their library. Or er, library into the graveyard. Simple yeah. as that. Next up is Frogify. It is a blue and one for enchantment aura. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a blue frog with base power 1-1. One, one. So you're just like, hey, cool, trigger constellation, make that due to 1-1. One, one. So it's pointless now. Yeah. Thanks. And we needed control for sure. But we also wanted to trigger Constellation and plus be low enough cost to actually go with Loris as well. So this works. Because the next one, of course, is Casamina's Transmutation. One in a blue pretty much does the exact same thing, except they're not a frog, which is sad. But a creature loses all abilities and has base power, toughness, 1-1. One, one. Simple as that. Yeah. Next is Omen of the Sea. It is a blue and one with flash enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, scry two, then draw a card. You can pay three and sacrifice it to scry two. Again, constellation triggers and dig deep. Yep, and con yeah. Hopefully, this is more like one of the most linchpin of the deck to help you out, just to keep cycling through for sure. And of course, we have to have it. Uh, didn't say please. One and two blue instant counter target spell. Controller puts the top three cards in the graveyard, just in case for future threats that you can't really deal with. Yeah, it's just a strictly better cancel. Yeah. Uh, next up is Thought Collapse, a two blue and one for an instant counter target spell. Its controller puts the top three of their library into the graveyard. Because they need to reprint two of them. Again, you just have a better cancel. And then of course, that's it. It's literally super solid, uh, compact deck for you just to keep plowing through uh, your deck and then their deck just to keep milling it out constantly. Yeah. 
And so for the lands, it's only two colors, barely, because of black has to be it with Luris and the omen of the of the, the black omen. But so we have the John Catacombs. We have two temples, just in case. We have a Fable Passage, because you have lots of basic uh, lands, just in case you need that second swap to get there. Now with that, of course, uh, we don't have a sideboard, but we do have a couple of honorable mentions just to help out. And the first one is a Tyrament chosen from death. Two black, legendary enchantment, because he triggers constellation. Two star. And his toughness is equal to devotion to black, but that's not really too important because he pays one in a black. Exile up to two target cards from your graveyard. From a graveyard, you gain life equal that way to help, you know, balance out graveyards of opponent's decks and you gain life to survive. It is actually not just a graveyard. From graveyards. So graveyards. you can choose one of theirs and one of yours if you need to. Just in case. Which is kind of nuts. Yep. Yeah. Uh, next up, and it is Ashiok, Dream Render. It is a uh, one and two black blue hybrids, and it's a five drop or five loyalty walker. Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause your controller to search their library. And then minus one target player puts the top four cards of the library into the graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. Yep, simple as that. Help you mill if you need it. Yep, just more mill, and of course it costs three, so you can't have it in your starting deck, so there you go. Yeah. But with that, that is. A super simple mill deck. I was pretty excited because we haven't made a mill deck in this, you know, rotation because it has or in the new set because it has to happen. Oh yeah. There has to be a reanimation and a mill deck every time. Oh yeah. Just how it works here on Geektopia Island. But with that, hopefully you enjoy your stay here and hopefully uh, the arena gameplay will be pretty fun to record. I'm sure. And hopefully you enjoy your stay here at Geektopia Island. Goodbye. Later. Also guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all our future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you very you much. much. We love you.